I've witnessed climate change over the 15 years that I've been on the ground as a firefighter. Because of climate change, we're seeing fires that are burning hotter, fires that are burning larger, fires that are becoming more and more intense and severe to a point where they're no longer actionable. Fire is a natural part of ecosystems, so some systems uh, burn every hundred years. In others, they would have burned every five to ten years. There was actually a, about a decade of drought uh, just over 120 years ago at the beginning of the last century, and there were a large amount of fires that happened at that time, probably a combination of drought and early settlement. And as a result, we actually have a large area of forest that is all the same age. There's a lot of forest that's 100, 120 years old. That is not natural to have that big area in such a way here, and it does make us particularly susceptible to fire risk. Wildfires burned through this landscape quite frequently until about 70 years ago. First Nations burned the forest, lightning fires burned the forest on a quite a regular basis. The modern era of fire suppression began when our ability to fight fires improved with modern aviation, there had been a number of large fires in North America. It had killed some people, it had burned down communities. And the goal at that time was that all fires should be put out, no such thing as a good fire. We have to suppress fires in order to keep people safe. That's the role of BC Wildfire Service, it's what they do. But unfortunately, through those fire suppression activities, we have interrupted how fires help a forested ecosystem to evolve. Fire suppression has had the unintended consequence of making our forests more uniform and more dense. We've lost a lot of the diversity and the natural resilience that was in the landscape. Forest fuels have built up. Because of that buildup, it can cause large, high-intensity wildfires that can have a catastrophic impact on the values that we want to protect and maintain in these ecosystems. We need to be working with fire. We need to be managing in anticipation of fire. We need to occasionally be using fire in our management so that fire is not something out there that we hope never comes here. It's something that is here, always has been here, and we need to work with. I'm seeing a change in the way we're managing fires on the landscape now, more and more we're allowing fires to burn within areas where there are no values at risk. And that benefits the ecosystem. It benefits future wildfires in terms of not having that fuel build up. Taking a more of a modified response to suppression is a more healthier, holistic way of looking at fire management and forest management. We use prescribed fire to reduce that risk of catastrophic fire, clean up that forest floor and the debris generated from these fuel management projects, as well as promote habitat for wildlife and to promote ecosystem nutrient cycling. The evolving role is to understand how nature does what it wants to do on its own scale. And we can manage the forest around us like a fire would, or we can let the fire do it. We can fight it on our terms, or we can let it dictate the terms. Fire management versus fire suppression. The more you learn, the better you get at protecting what's important to us as civilization and society here. There's so many things that influence how the forests grow and respond and change, and climate change is a big driver in how the forests are right now responding to all of those things, those weather patterns, and they're continually shifting and changing. Of course, there's a huge link between climate change and wildfire. And we know a bunch of things. We know that the climate is warming significantly. We know that extreme events are increasing in frequency. We know that in certain seasons we are drying, we're getting periods of extended drought. All of those things have implications for the forest and they all mean that the forest will burn more frequently with higher severity we need to really start to look at the forest in terms of its values. We need to think about what we are trying to maintain and what we need to maintain. We need to maintain carbon. We need to maintain forest resilience. And that means maintaining biodiversity, means maintaining wildlife trees. It means maintaining the diversity of underground 
linkages between trees that actually keep the forest resilient, all of those things, we need to put them first. A lot of these things are compatible and we need to manage well for them and then we can maintain this huge diversity of values in the forest and reduce wildfire risk overall. We've also been managing this land for over 20 years now and we see how it's changed in front of our eyes. The community is demanding us to take wildfire risk reduction into consideration in all of our work, as well as climate change adaptation. Some of the work that is happening in Harrop Proctor Community Forest is really leading the way in terms of thinking about how to do fuel treatments and maintain the forest and get some harvest while at the same time reducing fire risk and maintaining biodiversity values. All of these individual treatments that we're doing on the landscape are part of a larger plan. And over the next five to 10 years, they will all be connected up so that we have a continuous fuel break in behind the community and a few landscape level fuel breaks as well. So when the next wildfire comes, we will be in a much better position to protect the community and to reduce the negative impacts of a large wildfire. A lot of people talk about climate change as if it's something that is going to happen or is just starting to happen. But in fact, the climate has been changing for a couple of decades now, and that's already been measured. So climate change is not something that's in the future. Climate change is something that we're living with right now, and we're in the midst of a shift. If we're gonna do one thing, we need to truly embrace the paradigm shift that we're currently talking about in this province start to truly manage for carbon and ecosystem resilience. It's a true paradigm shift where we actually start to value the forest for what they give us. We see how much fire is returning to our landscape and we see the, the climate changing. The conversation has shifted. The management of the community forest shifts with the times and with our understanding of, of how dynamic the ecosystem is.